As a wise man once said, as a wise man once said, an area restricted account needs three things clear guidelines, limited exceptions, and interesting gameplay. Myths Garnia is an ultimate Iron Man account and is limited to the areas of the game that are part of Mistelin and Asgarnia, with a few exceptions of course. I'm using the areas as they were defined in the Trailblazer League as a guideline but not as a hard rule. This region includes such cities and towns as Lumbridge, Varrock, Falador, and Berthorpe, as well as other points of interest such as the Wizard's Tower, the Dig Site, and the God Wars Dungeon. It also includes three faraway islands. Fossil Island, which is part of Mistelin, the Void Knight Outpost, which is part of Asgarnia, and a third, slightly ambiguous one, the Isle of Souls. Soul Wars was officially added to the game on the same day that Trailblazer League ended, so it was never accessible during that time. But given that the main way of reaching it is through this portal in Edgeville, I'm going to safely assume that in a rerun of Trailblazer League, it would be accessible from Mistelin. If in the future they rerun Trailblazer League and that's not the case, uh, well I don't care. My account, my rules. I also want to specifically mention that any underground areas that I can access from within the boundaries I just described above, without the use of teleportation items or spells, are all fair game. As long as on the surface map I'm within the highlighted area, or on one of my three faraway islands, I'm considered to be within my region's boundaries. Now that that's all defined, let's move on to point number two. Fortunately, I don't need to add too many exceptions to this account. I'm already in my region, fresh off Tutorial Island, there's a lot to do in this region, and there's nothing preventing me from accessing what I would consider to be core content of the region. That being said, I still have two exceptions that I want to make. One of the really nice things about this region is that it has viable options for training all 23 skills. However, a traditionally tricky thing with the region locked accounts is the question of Slayer. If you're locked to a specific region and you have access to a Slayer Master, it's still possible to get assigned a task that cannot be completed within your region. In this case, your options are to either break your restriction or lock yourself out of doing Slayer entirely. I made a spreadsheet to math out my odds of getting completable Slayer tasks at various stages of my account. It starts at 100% chance with Kjeldar and goes down as I progress my account and new monsters outside my region get added to the list of possible Slayer assignments. In the worst case scenario, I still have about a 97% chance of getting a completable assignment if I request it from either Kjeldar or Vanica and then go to skip with Turil if necessary. I don't want to lock myself out of training Slayer just because I get unlucky with Slayer assignments, so I've decided that in the event that I get assigned dogs, monkeys, or lizards as a task from Turiel, I will allow myself to leave my region solely to complete the task. I know some region-locked purist snowflakes think that this completely undermines the integrity of the account, but personally, I play this game for fun, and on my account, I want to make rules that will keep the game fun for me. The second exception I want to make will be a one-time exception. I'll be allowing myself a single trip beyond White Wolf Mountain to visit the Trinone Stronghold, go down to the Ardoin Zoo, and back. I'm putting this part in here to hold myself to this being my only one-time exception on this account. I've put a lot of thought into it, and this singular trip will allow me to access several very useful quality of life unlocks on this account. I don't really care about the purity of the account, I just want it to be fun and interesting, and I see this one-time exception as simply removing a lot of tedium from my account progression without undermining the overall spirit of the account. Alright, on to the final point. I think this region definitely ticks the box of having interesting gameplay. I have access to all 23 skills, but I will have to think up unconventional ways for training a lot of them. I also have access to 10 different bosses, and lots of interesting unlocks I can go for. If I'm really crazy enough, I can even get the max cape, but don't expect to see that happening within this decade. Alright, I think that just about wraps up all the rules. If anything else with regards to the rules comes up in the future, I'll be sure to address it then. For now, it's time to begin. Welcome to the adventures of Miss Garnia. Alright, we're here. We've arrived. We're fresh off Tutorial Island. I'm really excited to start this adventure. And I'm going to cut myself off right there to let you guys know that I just lied to you. That's right, I'm not fresh off Tutorial Island. In fact, this is not my real inventory. This is... You know, I was just excited to play this account. I started playing. Uh, I wasn't even planning on making a progress series, but the more I played, I realized, you know what? Actually, I would like to, I would like to give that a go. 
I did start recording clips a little bit after this, so how about I just give you a little recap of what I've done so far in this account. The first thing I did, as is tradition, is to claim the full Ultimate Iron Man armor from Adam over here. I then made my way over to the Lumbridge Cook, and he's like, Oh, but can you please help me? I need, like, basic ingredients to cook with. You are a professional chef, and you don't have basic ingredients in your kitchen to cook with? Are you serious? What kind of chef are you? Don't you have a duke here? Doesn't he pay for your bills? Why do I need to get this stuff for you? I then did a little bit of classic woodcutting on basic trees and made some fires out of those logs. Upon reaching 15 woodcutting, I switched over to oak trees and burned those as well. And along the way, I did a little bit of fletching as well. I made my way over to Fred the farmer who wanted me to shear some sheep. So I did just that and came back to him for a reward. I would also frequently come to the Magic Tutor to get some free runes. Do you know that the Magic Tutor's name is Mikasi? And I would then use those runes up on the local citizens of Lumbridge. Occasionally, an imp would walk by and I would use my runes up on them as well, trying to get some beads. Unfortunately, I did not get any. I then went on an absolute tear on the chickens across the river, collecting meat, bones, and feathers. I would bury the bones. I then also cooked the meat of the chickens while this chicken over here washed on in horror. Man, what are you doing? That's really, that's really screwed up, man. Why are you doing that? Did you know that you can search this coop for free eggs? I'm not sure why you would ever need to do this, but fun fact. I made my way down to the Lumbridge Swamp and did a little bit of fishing on these shrimp. The XP was terribly slow. I bought a fishing rod and some bait and tried to switch over to fishing sardines and herring in Draenor Village, but I kept getting attacked by this asshole. So, I came back to the chickens to get my combat stats even higher. And that just about brings us up to present day. So, I'm gonna come back to chickens for a little bit to fight them. I think I'm just gonna ignore the meat for now. My cooking level is already well ahead of my fishing level, so I'm just gonna focus on burying the bones and getting my combat level a little bit up. I just need an herb. Hang on, that's pretty interesting. A guam leaf. No, oh, sorry, I don't have any. Oh, but he's- Oh, he gives me a strength potion. Anyway, that's that's very nice. Thank you. Alright, so I got enough feathers now for all these arrow shafts. So let's walk over to Lumbridge for our next goal while fletching these. So I'm thinking I'm gonna go train some mining now. I feel like I might as well. I can get a little bit of money from the items that I smith. Uh, so I'm gonna walk up the tower over here to grab the free pickaxe spawn. Actually, no, you know what? I've changed my mind. I'm instead going to make my way over to Draenor to use up this hundred fishing bait in my inventory. And, uh, you know, along the way, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna get me some revenge on a certain someone. Two coins. Cheapskate. All right, and we are just about finishing up. There's level 20 fletching just as we get to the end of our arrow shaft stack and we can already fletch oak logs nice it's nice to just enjoy a slow early game you know i'm not rushing sea slug i'm not rushing waterfall quest like you normally would on a new account i'm just here by the drain or willow trees it's really nostalgic here i spent so much time here cutting these willow trees as a kid in, in free to play it used to be so crowded and look now there's nobody uh i'm just gonna chill here and listen to unknown land uh, not what I'd describe as a song to chill out to, but you know, it's on. It's on the radio, so we're gonna listen to it. Alright, I think it's time to do some inventory management. This fishing with only half an inventory empty is getting kind of annoying. I'm gonna, unfortunately, drop this grimy quorum. Actually, I actually have no idea where I got this. Probably got it off a of man. Um, but it's gonna be so long before I can use it that I think I should just drop it realistically. Uh, also this emerald... Uh, I guess I could go sell it to a general store, but it's not going to be worth a whole lot. So, I'm just going to drop that here as well. And, you know, that will free up a little bit of inventory space to make this just a little bit easier. I'm also going to drop this knife, actually. I don't need that. Um, yeah. Alright, let's use up the last of this bait. And here we have level 15 fishing. I can now catch anchovies. Uh, in the small net fishing spot, so I'm gonna use up the last of my bait, and then in the future, I think I'm gonna go back to the small net fishing spots because 
then I don't need to spend any money on fishing bait. So that's quite nice. All right, there is the last of the bait used up. I'm just going to cook all this fish that I caught. I have a nice buffer between my cooking and fishing level. And look at how nice this inventory is going. Every single fish is being cooked successfully. That is beautiful to look at. Are you f serious? All right, so I think next up, I'm going to try and clear up some inventory space by doing this beginner clue scroll. So I'm going to head to the north of Falador, but I need a spade. So before that, I'm going to head to the farm south of Falador. Picking up the spade from Sarah here. And that's an easy task in the Falador diary to browse the shop. That's pretty cool. And now let's make our way over to the clue scroll step. All right, you are all witnessing some professional Ultimate Iron Man gameplay over here. I'm actually going to run back to the Tool Leprechaun. Note my grimy guams to save an inventory spot. This is some high level strategy right here. All right, we have arrived at the Mysterious Stones north of Falador. Will this be the one step beginner clue? No, it will not. It is. Oh my. It's a Charlie step. Woo! All right, let's go see what Charlie wants from us. We have arrived in the city of Varak. I know this episode is called My Favorite Places in Gilinor, but if I had to pick my favorite place in Gilinor, it would be Varak. In fact, more specifically, let me show you guys. We're going to walk down to the Blue Moon Inn. Now, you may be wondering, why do I have such a strong emotional attachment to the Blue Moon Inn? Well, here's a funny story. When I was a kid, uh, I remember, I, I, dis I vividly remember this. I got attacked by a shade in Lumbridge which was a random event that used to appear when you buried bones. And you could even run away from it. It wouldn't, it wouldn't chase you or anything. You could just run away. But I got so scared from this. I ran away. I, I don't know why. I came to the Blue Moon Inn in Varrock. And for months, I did nothing but train on the Barbarian, Johnny the Beard, and this woman that wanders by sometimes. That was it. For months on end, I, I didn't even bury any bones because I was too scared to spawn the Shade random event again. So for several months as a kid, I spent all my in-game time in this one building doing one thing. You know, I guess you could say I was a region locked account before it was cool. All right, Charlie, what do you want us to do? You want us to get you an iron ore. Okay, well, my mining level is four, so we are a little bit, a little ways away from that. But you know what? I think I want to train up my mining and smithing anyway. So we are going to do that. We're going to go for 15 mining and smithing. I was just listening back to some of the things I had recorded and I've come to the stunning realization that there are several occasions in which I said we instead of I, referring to something we would be doing. Uh, and I always found it weird when RS YouTubers would say we like, oh, we got to do this. Oh, we finally got the drop. Let's fucking go, boys. Uh, despite the fact that you were clearly just one person. Any case, there we go. I did it too. Uh, so it looks like this is some inescapable fate. You start recording yourself playing RuneScape and you pick up this weird habit. You start talking about yourself in the first person plural. So there we go. All right, here's some more ultimate Iron Man stuff that's going to be going on. I don't want to carry the strength potion around with me. So I'm just going to use it up to do a little bit of melee training on these cows um, and then I'm hoping that I will get a high enough strength level that I unlock an additional max hit. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so I have confirmed here that I can in fact max a 4 with the strength potion. So I have confirmed that even without the strength potion I can max it a 4 with 18 strength. So that's really good. Heading over to Bob's Axes. Uh, I'm going to buy a bronze pickaxe for an insane one coin instead of getting it off the roof. And I'm going to sell my steel hatchet since I don't need it right now. I'm also going to drop my spade and my tinder box. All right, time to start the mining grind. 15 mining, here we come. That is just about the first trip of copper and tin ready to be sent to the smelter. If this rock ever wants to mine. Uh, we get an uncut sapphire. That's interesting. Uh, I believe I won't be able to do anything with that for a while. 
Uh, 20 crafting to cut a sapphire. Yeah, I don't think I want to hold on to this, so... I'm probably just gonna sell it to the store for really cheap. Headed over to the store. I'm gonna sell... Why does someone sell Amelie's crystals here? On Iron Man. Interesting. Uh, I'm gonna sell this for a whopping... What was that? 20 coins or so? I'm gonna grab a hammer. I'm gonna make my way over to the furnace. I'm gonna make a variety of things, I think, when I have the opportunity. For now I'm just gonna make medium helms, but uh, I don't feel like world hopping to sell stuff. I'm just gonna make different items to maximize the amount of gold I get. And there we go, already level 4 smithing. How nice that this anvil was actually added here in Lumbridge. This feels just mwah, perfect for Ultimate Iron Man. Alright, there we go, level 5 smithing, and that is the first inventory of Bronze Med Helms done. The next few inventories I'm going to do different stuff, but there we go, got a little bit of money. Time to continue this mining and smithing grind. And we are just about to get level 15 smithing. We can now smelt iron ore. There we go. Hey, congratulations, man. That's really cool. Yeah, congratulations, man. That's really cool. Oh, thanks, guys. That's very kind of you. Time to sell our spoils to the general store. Actually going to equip this. Mm, actually, mm, I think I'm going to actually hold on to the bronze square shield because it doesn't have negative magic and range attack bonuses and actual defensive differences are very negligible so time to sell the last of the stuff that i smithed and we end up with 2280 coins not a bad haul let's make our way back to charlie and finish this clue scroll step so i did in fact autopilot not even uh, even well past charlie i was just going to the center of a rock uh gotta go back to the actual mine to mine some iron ore to complete this step and gonna mine some iron there we go I'm gonna mine a little bit more, just so that, because I do want some for the next thing that I want to do. So I'm gonna maybe get 10-15 pieces or so. And there we go, that is level 21 mining. And that actually lets me use a mithril pickaxe next time I want to come back to mining. So that's pretty nice. And now, let's make our way over to Charlie and hand in this clue scroll step. Alrighty, 50-50 chance that this is the casket. Will we get it? Yes, we will. Okie dokie. Now, I probably should stack up these beginner caskets, but there are some useful things that I can actually get in here. So I'm just going to say screw it and open it up right now. Let's see what we get. Oh, that's nice. That's a staff of fire, not a staff of air, but you know what? It does save me about 1200 GP and I can just sell it to Zaf and buy a staff of air if I want. Also, a uh, black robe top, which I think has a slight magic attack bonus. I will gladly take those i'm actually really happy about this clue scroll reward uh, just seeing that staff is it feels like a key unlock to start off the account and i think that's where we're going to leave episode one i hope you all enjoyed and i hope that you will join me in the future episodes of the adventures of miss garnia